Yeah, welcome back to the channel, you guys. Welcome back to Ironclad RC. I'm Big B. Thank you guys for riding with me. <laughs> this is a, like a sport fishing style boat that I built about five years ago. All right. Um, it was actually the very first boat that I built, like, period. It's all wood and um, fiberglass, you know, over it. Redo the boat. It had like a surface drive set up with a rudder and everything on it and uh yeah i just i, I want to get it back going i've got all the motor bed taken out um the servo holder everything stripped out got it sanded down i'm actually going to paint it with appliance epoxy all right the whole boat probably going to do it all white i used spray paint down here and it, it and it chipped like really bad in some places so i think i'm going to do the whole boat white unless i can get my hands on some dye which i have some green dye i just don't know what color it'll make the epoxy if it's a nice color it may do the bottom green again because i like it but i used to work sport fishing boats just like this in the past i, I did it for 10 years um, of my life you know offshore trolling half day fishing full day fishing 24 hour trips but uh this i mean this boat it means a lot to me um like i said it's my first boat and i and i just want to show it some love it's been sitting over here in the corner with the rest of my homemade boats and um yeah i just want to refinish it so uh so we're going to paint it today and you guys let me know what you think what you know if you if you want to see the whole build process um i'm going to make a homemade motor mount a homemade submerged drive a homemade strut uh the whole nine you know a little mini series and i'll do that for you um if not i'll 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 build the boat and just kind of show it to you once i'm done but uh let me know let me know what you guys want to want to do it does ride nice it does ride kind of nice so uh, i've had it running before you know with a brushed motor and stuff so uh yeah yeah i'm gonna get started painting it like i said that appliance paint it works really good um so yeah yeah i'm gonna make like a little scale fishing boat it means a lot to me it's a big part of my life um before i had kids and stuff so Stick around. Every, you know, everything's going to be handmade. So I figured it might help some of you, uh, some, of, some of these guys out, you know, some, some guys that like to tinker and, 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 you know, make stuff homemade. This might be right up your alley, you know, but uh, I've already got it all wiped out. Got it cleaned with mineral spirits and everything gonna paint her up gonna go heavy on the inside because this boat does get uh, water in it such a big hatch area right here I, I'm thinking I should probably should have like closed the, the front half off you know like attach this and just have access to the back back here but like I said this was my first boat and I really don't want to change much of change much of it up it's really like a little for looks you know just to play around with maybe even make a recovery boat out of it be perfect for that Yeah, man, this boat, it really, it really does remind me of, you know, some of the best years of my life, you know. Um, we've caught, I've caught tiger sharks in the 800-pound range. It was um, big, man. It was big. It, that picture there don't do it no justice. Oh, there it is. We were dragging, <clears throat> we had to drag it. Uh, you know, we hooked that rope to his tail backwards and so, and drug it backwards so we could kill it. <laughs> it was huge. I've caught one, one so big, it's actually the only tiger shark I ever kept. It was so big, we couldn't get it on the boat, all right? But we had to tie it on the back of the boat back here. I wrapped a, a rope around its tail and a rope around its head, all right? And cleated it off on both sides of the transom, 
All right, and he was draped on the back of the boat like this on the way home. 800 pound tiger shark. Oh, there it is. There's the picture of how we had it tied off on the back of the boat. You guys see that? That glare. Sorry, kids are in the background. There's another one. Um, <laughs> on the way home, you know, going through the inlet and uh, the canals back to the dock in Calabash, we, um, we had about 20, it must have been at least 20 boats following us. You know, they seen that big shark hanging off the back, man. It was, it was a cool, it was a cool catch. Giant, giant stingray occult. It was so rough out one day and my, the whole, all the people we took out for charter, they were, got seasick. So we, we took them stingray fishing. Look at this giant, man. That's, that's me beside it. And that thing was probably a couple, couple hundred pounds at least, at least a hundred pounds, at least. Uh, dolphin. I'm trying to find a picture of that big wahoo, man. I want you, I want you, look at that. Look at that stringer. Huh. <laughs> the meat with no feet. Big eye toro. That's pretty cool. <laughs> we, we used to also go behind shrimp boats. You know, uh, the bo shrimp boats would have their outriggers out, dragging the bottom for shrimp. And... It was like a, a feeding frenzy back there for black tip sharks in the summertime. That's the tr that's how we used to fish behind the, the shrimp boats. Drop down while they're culling all the bycatch out. Oh man, like a half day trip, which was four and a half hours. We would catch anywhere from two to eight black tips. We would let them all go, you know, get pictures and let them go. But they all ranged anywhere from like 80 to 300 pounds, black tip sharks. Um, some of the best days of my life was, you know, working on charter boats. Uh, we'd go out to the Gulf Stream, drop down for bottom fish, catch big gag groupers in the fall, bee liners in the fall, which is a red snapper. Uh, we'd catch, you know, the vermilion snapper, the genuine, like, American red snappers in the fall, which you're not allowed to keep anymore. Look at them, look at them genuines, huh? Genuines, huh? Um, yeah, in the winter, in the winter time, we did half day trips uh, for black sea bass. Black sea bass, some monsters there. Cold water sea bass, three pound black sea bass. Which, I mean, it's fun fishing. It was, and and uh, yeah, we would we would troll in the inlets for uh, Spanish mackerel. You know, catch our limit in Spanish mackerel. I believe it was like twelve a person. You know, in a half a day, little baby sailfish we called. Trolling for Spanish mackerel, how about that, huh? So what, you, what is, six people on a boat, you know, whatever that is, 100, fi 100 fish or something like that, I don't even know, but, uh, yeah, man, then when we get back to the docks, I, <laughs> I had to clean all the fish because I was the deckhand. Um, I, I would have to literally clean, like, thousands of pounds of fish every day, <laughs> which, you know, I got paid for it, but <laughs> that was probably the suckiest part, but I was quick at it, man, I, I you know, I, you know that's where I got that meat with no feet. You know what I mean? I mean I could I could I could run a fillet knife through a through a, a a snapper or a black sea bass like literally like that. Flip the skin over without even touching it, the meat, and fillet it off the off the skin. I mean I was quick at it, y'all. Uh, I, I also we used to fish uh, fishing tournaments. Uh, the name of our our team was Mackerel Mafia. Uh, we placed third second and third in a couple tournaments uh, which was pretty cool see the outriggers are out we were trolling into that water spout man everybody was freaking out on the boat man we actually caught a lot of fish that day i love fishing that's why i did the whole um you know blackjack 42 fishing video because i you know i i've been messing with my rcs lately usually i, I would go cat fishing in the summer like flathead cat fishing i had uh my bass boat but um I just hadn't really been in the mood for it. The other day, I was just in the mood to to go fishing, you know. And uh, I was like, "Hey, what, why not? Let's take the let's take the RC boat out and go fishing," you know. I would love to make this one a fishing boat. That's why I was thinking about putting a keel on the bottom, putting some lead in the bottom of the keel, and uh, and, and weighting the bottom of it. Uh, if you get a big fish on, she might sink. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So <laughs> it would be an awesome fishing boat. It really would. But um. Just like, you know, I, I don't think it would actually be the, you know, best fishing boat. <laughs> it's, not, it's not really wide enough, too shallow of uh, sidewalls and everything. 
I think that looks pretty good. Uh, I'm gonna let it dry up. We'll come out here and kind of sand it and then um, put another coat on, you know? And I'll sand this right here down since there was a couple spots that didn't have paint and I'm not priming it. I don't think you have to prime this paint, which is really nice. You just lay it down right on your, right, right on the surface, you know, your fiberglass, your wood, whatever. This stuff's pretty cool, pretty good stuff. I'm not really, I mean, I want it to look good, you know, but I'm not too concerned about little imperfections and stuff in the boat. I do want it to look good. I am going to make it a scale boat, so I'm probably going to weather it and everything. So the little imperfections will probably, uh, they'll, they'll stay there. You know, it, it gives it some character. Uh, I was thinking about naming the boat the Bill Collector. <laughs> and um, maybe putting a couple, like, sailfish bills in the back of it like they stuck in there you know the bill collector get it there was a boat back home that was named a bill collector and i thought that was the coolest name in the world you know uh i've all actually called my first sailfish i called it with 30 pound test it was 56 pounds got it certified you know about three miles from the beach all right we were uh we were just drift fishing for black sea bass and i put my drift line out Hooked up with a 50 pound sailfish, you know, pretty cool, pretty cool. Those were the days, those were the days. I got out of fishing because uh, the, the state, the government had put, well, I guess the state, state regulations, they put so many regulations on the fishing and uh, a lot of, you know, I made my paycheck, which was pretty good. I was the first mate, I actually worked on several different boats my fishing career, but um, the sport fishing i worked on a 44 foot striker which it was an aluminum hull sport fishing boat and we we raised more more fish more trolling fish than any other boat in the area I, you know i think it had something to do with the way the sound of the boat uh you know the engines on that aluminum hull it just raised fish man we caught black fin tuna and every you know you know uh oh man that's a good day bunch of black fin tuna wahoo my biggest wahoo was 103 pounds 103 pound wahoo um again i caught that one on a drift line out in the gulf stream anchored up uh, trolled my whole you know trolled for mahi in the spring and that wahoo in the spring and uh you know trolling I, you know the biggest wahoo I ever caught was like 60 pounds and but you know, I caught the hundred pound wahoo with a four alt pin, old pin four alt reel with a king king fishing rod with 30 pound test. All right, hundred pound wahoo. It spooled me. Uh, you know, it spooled me. It spooled me like two or three times. Um, couldn't couldn't pull anchor because I pulled the anchor and I didn't want to hand a rod to nobody, so I had to fight it on anchor. A wahoo, a hundred pound wahoo had no idea what it was at the time but man it was oh man it was so amazing it was so amazing y'all um well oh yeah what i was saying about the the regulations they put so many regulations on the fishing that uh you know people didn't want to take as many charters out you know um you know you pay fifteen hundred dollars for an all-day fishing trip and you can only keep a cool cooler little cooler full of fish so um you know, people weren't taking as many boats out. When they did go out, they didn't tip as good. So uh, I kind of got out of it. You know, I started my tree company. Um, and um, once I started my tree company, I got back into the RC hobby. You know, uh, actually, I'll show you guys my first RC boat. Let me let me go grab it. First RC boat, which you can actually still... I've seen this boat on online. I don't know if it's like new old stock or if they still make it. But it's by Shinsi. It's a Voyager, which... Oddly enough, was the boat I worked on, the 44-foot striker. That was the boat I worked on, the Voyager 2, all right? I was a young man back then, you know, and I, I tried putting a rudder on it and stuff, and, you know, uh, that was my first boat right there. That was it. That's what got me started in the hobby. Actually, before this, I used to take those little beach boats, you know, the little toy boats. Uh, when I was young, young, like a little boy, I would take my RC cars apart, and put the motors in in uh, toy toy boats. I actually made a shrimp boat that would 
pull like a little cast net type thing and uh, catch minnows. <laughs> when I was a kid, you no remote control. You just put the batteries in there, let it go. Let, let it go right down the bank. It actually trolled the bottom because my family, they are shrimpers. Uh, my, one side of my family is on shrimpers. The other side of my family is fishermen. And um, yeah, yeah. Enough about me, yeah. So, just a little backstory about Big B and uh, where I come from and how, how, uh, how I got started in the hobby. My granddaddy used to build wooden shrimp boats. He was the shrimper, uh, which my cousins they still shrimp to this day. They own some 50 footers. But um, my grandpa, this is why I started building this boat. My grandpa used to build, you know, wooden model shrimp boats like scale model boats you've probably seen them in seafood restaurants and stuff like the big uh you know 60 inch big nice looking uh scale shrimpers shrimp boat trawling boats he used to do that and i used to sit there when i was a kid and watch him I, my dad and my, my grandpa they used to race boats and stuff you know my dad was an outboard motor mechanic you know uh, he worked on boats his whole life like outboard motors his whole life you know from the from the age he was like 14 he's just a genius at it old school like johnson evan Rhodes, omc you know um he, he was a genius at working on outboard and inboard motors i mean he was the best the best around they called him his name was johnny they called him john rude johnson evan Rude. he was the man john rude but uh but yeah a little backstory about me we're gonna let this dry up and uh come back out tomorrow and spray probably gonna spray it with my uh you know i got like a little touch-up gun here this thing's perfect for these little model boats and we're gonna spray it with that all right so um sorry about the long video but uh just wanted to kind of share a little bit about myself i know you guys watch my videos and i do appreciate everybody's views i love all of my subscribers you guys have been great thank you so much um I want to give back. I want to give back to you guys sometime. I'm going to do some kind of giveaway here shortly. Um, probably for my 3,000 subscriber uh, mark. So kind of look out for that. That's coming up. I don't know when, but it'll be soon, hopefully. But uh, I just wanted to say thank you guys. And I wanted to give you guys a little uh, peek into my personal background. My background, blah, blah, blah. But uh, thank you. Just want to say thank you. Uh, we'll, we'll finish up the, the outside tomorrow. All right. Let me know. Let me know if you guys want to see the whole build on this boat. Let me know because um, I'm going to do it whether or not. You know, whether you, I video it or, or not, I'm going to do it. So y'all let me know. All right. Oh, pretty good, man. It turned out pretty good. That's That's solid. That's solid right there. All the way up to the bow. Got my hands all painted up last night. Left my gloves in the truck. <laughs> uh, I actually, after I, after I painted this, I was, I dropped my, my hatch, and <laughs> I, uh, I cracked it right here. So what I did was I, I backed it with fiberglass mat. All right, last night, and then today I just kind of grinded out the crack right there and filled it with with glass. I didn't even put no no uh no matting or anything in it i also filled my old my old holes where i used to screw the hatch in at so um so we'll actually sand all this down i really wanted to paint this today but i've got plenty of time to paint the top uh, i really just wanted to get the hull painted so i can start with the uh electronics speaking of electronics this is what i'm going to use what i've got planned for the boat i'm either going to use uh the brush the brushed motor brushed esc this is just a cheap esc i don't know if it's any good or not you know 540 size with the uh water coil for water cooling all right uh thinking about doing twins might do twins and get another esc thinking about it that would be twice the hardware and i have to make the hardware exactly the same so, but i got two of them just in case uh <laughs> thinking about it but, uh, you know, if this don't work out, if it blows up, if we smoke it, uh, I could put this in there. This 3650 with a 70 amp turnergy. But uh, I really want to run the brush set up. All right. Um, I was thinking about going straight shaft with it. I don't know if this is long enough. 
if it's not long enough, I may go with this .130 cable. All right, make a custom strut for it um, with these nickel metals ran in series, 3,000 nickel metals run in series. All right, uh, it'll give me some extra weight in the boat to distribute around because this thing's heavy. It wants to start adding all the aluminum for the tower and everything. It's going to get really heavy, uh, top heavy. So I need weight down low. So I figure nickel metals, they're heavy. Um, they, you know, they're perfect for brush motors and it'll give me some weight in the boat. The homemade bracket I made. Um, but yeah, we're going to go submerge drive with it, but I'm going to start painting the boat. All right. Uh, yeah, yeah. The meat with no feet, huh? <laughs> like a little stockpile of exotic woods um trim trim the boat out with you know uh i think this is right here is bacote it's like a spanish hardwood all right this is blood wood look how pretty that is um purple heart Look at that, that's nice, huh? Purple heart. I used to do a lot of woodworking, you know, um, before I got back into the hobby, you know? I actually built this, I actually built this planer right here, you know, handmade out of Bacote. But um, this is like splatted something or another, turpentine or some shit, I don't know. Uh, I think this is teak right here. And then I'm not sure what this one is, but that is a pretty wood grain right there. So we may uh, we may trim the boat out later on, you know, if I ever get around to it. I got so many projects going on um, with some of this with some of this hardwood, especially like the teak or this bloodwood right here, man. That would look really nice on the boat. Maybe even go around the gunnels right here with it, you know. Uh, but just wanted to kind of show you guys that since I'm telling you guys about me and y'all are, you know, kind of. We're bonding. We're bonding. Yeah, we're bonding. So, uh, so yeah. yeah. Got it wiped down. She's nice and clean. She's all dried up. Got it hanging from the ceiling. Uh, you know, I got these holes up here for my my guardrail. So I used that, the through holes for the for the wire to hang it up. I went ahead and sanded up the hatch. All right, got that prepped up, ready to go. And uh, you know, accent it everywhere with black, like the rub rail. You know, do some like fine painting with paint brushes and uh yeah yeah i'm gonna get started quit jacking my jaws i know y'all are probably tired of hearing me talk if you're even still here <laughs> come out good it come out good huh yeah it come out nice it come out nice i don't want to push the lid down all the way because it might mess up the paint but uh 
yeah it's the next day and uh it came out excellent i'm gonna paint the windows and stuff you guys will see all that all the all the little detail paint and striping and stuff like that in the next video um but yeah man it come out really good really good i like this epoxy paint you don't have to clear coat it it's like solid you could you know you could rub it up against stuff and it's not gonna it's not gonna scrape off you know what i mean it's not gonna scrape off the boat but it come out really good you know I, i'm gonna put my little seats back in there the 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 dashboard and everything um yeah yeah i've got this uh aluminum piece of aluminum right here we're gonna actually make a, an out couple of outriggers that fold out you know maybe you know kind of some short ones just for weight or whatever but uh yeah it's gonna it's gonna be a fun build it's gonna be a fun build like i said we're gonna either use this 3650 or a 540 brushed motor nickel metals and uh yeah 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 thank you guys for watching i just wanted to kind of give you a little insight of my life you know uh, a little bit of my background why i love boats so much I, I love my trucks i love my trucks don't get me wrong but um i love my boats more you know what i'm saying it's just in my blood it's in my blood i got that salt in my blood and um yeah man yeah yeah thank you guys for watching uh, you guys have been great you've been great thank you uh everyone all my subscribers everybody who watches my videos if you hung in here this long thank you it's a long video and uh i just kind of rambled on jacking my jaws you know what i'm saying um still jacking my jaws let me let me get off of here let me get off of here thank you for thank you for watching like comment subscribe to the channel big b with ironclad rc